African origins of the Omec. Jop out. Be, be, king. Get free or die. Heavy is the head to wear the crown. All right, family, if you want to donate to these live streams, you make sure you can go to, you can go to my cash app and you can go to dollar sign J-A power 718. You can hit $2, a dollar, 5, 10, 20, 100, whatever. And so, you know what to do. You know to thumb up these videos. You already know what it is. King, I had a lot of it. The information don't stop. You see what I'm saying? Y'all need this immediately. You needed this shit five years ago. You see what I'm saying? But it's been a lot of speculation and talk about the uh, African origins of the Omex because that's just what it is. That's just what it is. You just got to get up and go down there and see for yourself. So y'all thumb up this video. We're going to get this cracking. I don't know if we're going to get through all of it because it's long. Now, uh... I, I got extensive research on. I be used to be on this. Now, the copper ops, this the only thing to give y'all, you know, some what it look like credibility, but it ain't no credibility to you because these are African people, period. You see what I'm saying? Once I show this shit tonight, the whole goddamn shit fall and crumble. You see what I'm saying? Tears and shit. Niggas gonna be uh, rain dancing and shit after this shit right here. That just facts. And so I got a video for y'all. I'm not going to prolong it. I'm not going to get into this goofy shit because we got a lot of work to do. Y'all thumb up this video. Subscribe to this channel. You see what I'm saying? Now, the video I'm about to play is called Africans Came Before Columbus. It, they came before the time of Christ, to be real. Which they came 2,000 years before Christ, before y'all so-called Savior or whatever. And so, you know, and it's a lot of evidence that these people are African. And what y'all must show. You see what I'm saying? It ain't, it's two, the mixing of two cultures. And just since you, some, some of y'all might not believe me, you see what I'm saying? I'm going to let the little Indians and the Mexicans tell you for themselves who these people is. Now, I heard my brother Nat Measy. Nat Measy, you need to just come on back to black power, bro. And leave them LBA niggas alone, bro. You need to come on back to Black Power and get in some serious studying. You see what I'm saying? Now, I got your name in here, but I'm not putting you in the category with these goofies. You know, you can't believe that they African. Have you really look at, Have you been to Mexico to look into this subject, bro? The brothers and sisters done being, I done being, you know what I'm saying? We done done this research. Trust me. You see, so what I'm showing you is something that I know. This ain't something that I'm, I think, or I'm hypothesizing. This is something I know, all right? See, but once I show you the African origins, and if y'all like these videos, you see what I'm saying? You just gonna pop up with this type. You have to go do the research. You see what I'm saying? Now, I got about 70 slides. I got three, four videos I want to play if we can get to it all. Now, I'm not gonna prolong it. I'm going to play this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell, like the video. Jop out! Be, be, king! My civilization, as I said, is a sort of a cultural unification. Even some cultures came from the other side of the ocean, some cultures were here already, like the Olmecs. And they are considered probably the roots of the Africans because of the Negroid features. One of the face more beautiful. You can see the lips, the nose, the eyes. This is completely negroid face, and the weight of this face is 25 tons. Well, they show you to you the exactly origin, negroid, the basic origin for these peoples. What do you think? To, to show you when these people was arrived to this continent, they tried to demonstrate when they arrived to America. And that was before Christ. About 1200 years BC was a time when they made these faces. Priest. Priest. I want you to take a look at the original graffiti. This is a graffiti, original Mayan graffiti, of a boat with a here, right here, with three cells. Actually, wow. not 
wanted to prove that some of the Mayan cultures came from the other side of the ocean before Cristobal Columbus. Wow. What we are seeing here is uh, cultural evidence in order to really know that well, what we had here, talking about the Mayas, is the encounter of all the cultures of the world. When we talk about the Egyptians, when we talk about the Mayas, actually they even interact. Just like what the Book of Mormon says, the same people build the pyramids of Egypt, same people build these structures or actually develop the Mayan civilization. But they are talking about the same people, could be sometimes in a different time frame or could be the same. But what we're trying to actually share is the information about that. We're talking about a huge cultural unification. The first person to suggest there were Africans in America before him. He actually says in the journal of his second voyage that when he was in Haiti, black-skinned people had come in large boats from the south and southeast trading in gold-tipped metal spears. Well, what's interesting about that, so upon returning to Spain, is that he actually took the spearheads and he, uh, he sent them away and they had them uh, assayed and it turned out to be these spearheads were covered in this metal, that uh, this alloy that the inhabitants called guanin and uh, <coughs> the metallurgists uh, actually found out that this was an alloy of 32 parts. It was like 18 of gold, 6 of silver, 8 of copper, which, dun dun dun, matched the metal used in spearheads made in Western Africa for thousands of years as carried by medieval African warriors, including the Mali and the Moors. The West Africans even called this metal guanine, the same name used by the natives of Hispaniola. Do you have any ocular proof uh, of our presence in this hemisphere before Columbus. Oh yes, um, there are many heads of West Africans in the latter period and their earlier heads in the pre-Christian period. Something you can show us that yes. I can show in terms There's of one I, I, um, that doesn't deal with the period I've been dealing with but which is very unusual because it has braids. And this was this was deliberately um, covered up because this head has been, it, it has not been shown in public for about 50 years. It so these are braids here. Yeah, these are braids. This is a stone head. And where does this go back to? What this here? goes back to Tresapotes. It's a period before Christ, and it's found on the head ah, on a braid stone here, a braid sculpture in stone. Before, there, Christ. Bef before Christ, it's found in the Olmec civilization. At least a dozen explorers, including Constantine Ravenous, reported seeing blacks upon reaching the New World. In fact, in 1513, Spanish explorer Vasco Nunez de a tribe of Ethiopians in Panama. And according to Balboa's log, these men came from a totally black village that was two days' journey away. And he figured that these blacks had come from Ethiopia uh, at a much earlier date. Now, Islamic historian Amir Hajib reported that voyages west from Mali were happening in the year 1311, just uh, 150 years before Columbus. Ferdinand Columbus wrote a book in his body. He said, my father told me he saw Negroes north of Honduras. And then I found that Vasco Nunez de Balboa in September 25th in the year 1513 coming down the slopes of Guaracua which is in Darien, which we now call Panama, actually saw two tall black men. 1858 was the discovery at Tres Sapotes of a stone head. Now this is the stone head. This is the first head to be discovered. Now look closely at this head. When the Mexicans saw this head, when their scholars saw this head, scholars like Orozco Ibera, Jose Melgar, etc., they were absolutely convinced that there were Africans in America at some ancient time. Why were they convinced? They were convinced by two things. By the African physiognomy, the, 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 the dome of the forehead, the, the cut of the nose, the, the, the jaw, the mouth, etc., but also by something which has never been mentioned in the archaeology for some odd reason. And that is, at the back of the stone head, there was hair, detailed Ethiopian type hair. No Native American has hair like that. 
I don't remember how it was that, that, that Barack Obama, I think, had said that um, the uh, that uh, Islam had played a great role at the founding of our nation. And uh, I said, David, I, I wasn't aware of that. As a student of history, I also know civilization's debt to Islam. Uluzawa, that carried the light of learning through so many centuries, paving the way for Europe's renaissance and enlightenment. I also know that Islam has always been a part of America's story. The first nation to recognize my country was Morocco. In signing the Treaty of Tripoli in 1796, our second president, John Adams, wrote, the United States has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. And since our founding, American Muslims have enriched the United States. They have fought in our wars, they have served in our government, they have stood for civil rights, they have started businesses, they have taught at our universities, they've excelled in our sports arenas, They've won Nobel Prizes, built our tallest building, and lit the Olympic torch. And when the first Muslim American was recently elected to Congress, he took the oath to defend our Constitution using the same Holy Quran that one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, kept in his personal library. Perhaps the most impressive of all the Muslim voyages to the New World, which we can today document, concern the Mandinka of West Africa. Writing in the pathways of sites in the provinces of kingdoms, Shihab ad-Din al-Umari recounted a conversation that he had with the famed Mansa Musa, who was traveling through Egypt in his famous Hajj pilgrimage. And according to Mansa Musa, a few years before, his older brother, Abu Bakari, who was then the ruler of the Mandinka Kingdom of Mali, had sent two expeditions west across the Atlantic, two fleets. This would be around the year 1310. And we know they reached America. We know that because of the linguistic evidence, if for no other reasons. There is today in South America an American Indian tribe that uses Mandinka ideograms as its form of written communication. And there is in North America an American Indian tribe located in the middle of the Atlantic seaboard who which back around the mid 18th century, a Moravian missionary went and studied with them and wrote a dictionary of their language. Modern linguists looking at that dictionary have discovered that many, many, many of those words are in fact Mande, the language of the Mandinka Indians. And at least one Central American Indian tribe has clan names that correspond exactly to clan names of the Mandinka of West Africa. Yes, Muslims were in America long before Columbus, but we were also there with Columbus. When Columbus landed on San Salvador Island on October 12, 1492, at least one Muslim and three Moriscos if we go and look into the cultural evidence that has been left behind in, uh, in the Americas, we can see statues, for example, nowadays that resemble pretty much the features of these statues, uh, look more African than native, indigenous, Native American. Uh, this is taken as evidence as well that Africans, Muslim, African Muslims, must have been to the Americas and must have traveled to uh, South America as well as to the Caribbean before Christopher Columbus and that Muslims from Al-Andalus as well as from Africa from the Malian Kingdom for example must have been in the Americas and must have been doing some trade already with the Native Americans. Now 
I'ma stop it right there. If y'all want to see this whole video, you stroll down my timeline. Uh, Africans, the first Americans. Go look up that documentary. And <clears throat> I want y'all to notice, because I got the story of Al Bukhari in here pulled up. I got, uh, you notice when he say the Indian tribes got the same linguistics as the Africans. Not only do they got the same linguistics, the same tribal names as the Africans. Hold up. So let's get it. Now thumb up this video. Let's get into the lesson. Because I got the lesson for you. Thumb up this video. Now, again, you said it is linguistic evidence and everything. We're going to start right there. Boom. Now, this right here uh, come off the documentary, The First American. And it immediately tells you that these are Ethiopian people that sailed to America before the time of Christ. Now, you've seen Jewish scholars, uh, Indian and Mexican scholars. You've seen uh, Arab scholars, black scholars, white scholars. All of them that came to this conclusion by linguistic evidence. Yeah, you ain't got the bodies of the Omex. Or do we? Is she an Omex? Okay, then, see? 10,000 years is the time of Lucille. The OMAC date back almost 5,000. All right, now that's carbon dating, but they got a uh, 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 phenotypical evidence. You see what I'm saying? Uh, the writing is the same, which I'm going to show. You see what I'm saying? Now, Lucille is a mix between, you got to realize, you got Africans coming in from the west coast of Africa, I mean the west coast of America, into America, you got Africans coming in, through, I mean, from the Pacific, then you got Africans coming in from, uh, the, to the East Coast, you know, from the, uh, Egypt and other places, which I'm going to show, and y'all got to get y'all chronology right when y'all study this subject, you just can't pile it all together and just look at it and just one, no, that ain't how it works, you take chronology time, and, and you situate the dates, and you can see how the dates match up you see what i'm saying now <laughs> boom so that's one piece of evidence right there you know what i'm saying now what y'all don't know is that the uh africa had his own ships you see what i'm saying he had his own ships i'm talking about barges too you see what i'm saying they talk about traveling to the west which i'm gonna show you see what i'm saying you you got in your mind that we were sitting around waiting on the Europeans to fucking show up. And man, we gonna just wait on the Europeans to come and take us to America. <laughs> man, get out of here, yo. Y'all got to use y'all mind. Y'all still got a slave mentality. You, that's how we know you African. Motherfucker talking about you some kind of copper Indian or some shit like that. Nigga, the Indians came after the African. Period. Period. And the Aborigines are African. The real Aborigines in the Southern Pacific. Okay? Period. It's an African world. That just facts. And you notice them big ass ships. Them, them ships is 140 feet long. The same size as the ships today that we use. Barges. Now I want y'all to notice something. Now we also gonna get in tonight. The Twa. The little Twa people. The little uh which is the oldest people on the planet. They're older than the Khoi Khoi and the Sam people. You see what I'm saying? The Khoi Khoi and the Sam are the second oldest. The oldest people is the Twa. And we're going to get into them tonight, and I'm going to get into what the Indians say about the Twa people. Now, what y'all got to realize is <sighs> Egypt at this time is being invaded by the Tamahu, the foreigners. The ones not like us. You know what I'm saying? Them weird people or whatever. They invading. You see what I'm saying? And the African is figuring like, well, we must. You got to understand. The Nile Valley at that point was the economic power of the world. Just like how everybody coming into the United States today. All kind of immigrants and shit. And, you know, the United States got all the means of travel all the means of communication. That's the same thing it was in the Nile Valley. Y'all got to get out y'all mind that the, the greatest technology is what we got in America. That's just not true. That's just not true. America already stumbling. 
falling, crumbling from its inner structure. These civilizations lasted at least over 20,000 years because y'all got to deal with the pre-dynastic. You see what you got to deal with the pre-dynastic. Now the Twa was the navigators on most of the ships. Now you see if you, you see the little Twa is controlling them and telling them where to go. Okay? You see what I'm saying? They controlling the sail and they controlling the navigation. They're just facts and this ain't the only one. You see what I'm saying? Why well, I can show Africans on ships in the little twa guiding them. Now you see this right here is a old mat. But you see it got some what you would perceive as Asian because they got slanted eyes. But you just heard that Jewish and the Arrow scholar about the Dinka. Now if you look at the Dinka, they they black it in mud. They black it in the darkest midnight, but they got what you would perceive as Chinese eyes. You see what I'm saying? These is the first people not only to, you know, populate America, okay? It was the first people to also populate Asia and China. The first people, to, the first three groups to go into uh, Asia is the Twa first. Then you got the Khoisan, which all Asians descend from, the Khoi and the San. And then you got uh, the Dinka, which they call Bantu, and which I'm going to show they migration. But you see the early, the later Omac cultures, which were the Asiatic types, or these could also be African types with the Dinka. You see what I'm saying? You see they got African coach. You see, you see they got African coach. He got the Pharaoh hat on. So that's another evidence. Boom. They always show the old mat. Thumb up this video. They always show the old mat with the helmet on with the African features. But when he take the helmet off, he got an afro. And you can see at the front of my head, that little peak right there. He got one too. Okay. And you can visibly see, let me blow it up for you, that his hair is nappy. Now you trying to tell me you can't see the African in his face. You can't see the, the blackness in this man right here. Let me go on. Boom. Got something to read right here. Now, again, we're going to be dealing with the twine a little bit, but I want to read this right here for y'all. I hope we have enough time to finish this tonight. You see what I'm saying? In many ancient uh, and surviving Indian cultures, dwarfs are considered the... Uh, Miraculous beings of the earth and the mountains. Uh, they are capable of transforming themselves from human into forms of uh, sacred plants, animals in Osaki, the same place where black people live right now, which I showed y'all in uh, uh, the African origins of Mexico. Go over there and thumb up that video. That same Osaki or whatever that is right there. That's the same place. They were divine. They were they were divine mushrooms and, and are still used in the rituals. They are often appear as little men or dwarfs bearing both male and female characteristics. Now, I'm gonna show y'all the God best. You see what I'm saying? The people take their God wherever they went. Just how like I was showing you. The foods that was bought wasn't just bought just in the slave trade. A lot of those foods was bought by Abu Kari and them. Africans came over here at different times. They was trading with the Native Americans and also training them, teaching them how to speak, teaching them how to write, teaching them my language, teaching them religion. I'm going to show you they got the same religion as the ancient Egyptians. But you see... The Twa is a very sacred people, even in Indian culture. You can go into the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians still call them the same thing, the magical Twa, which I'm going to show. Which I'm, like I said, God's first people. Now, this right here, now if I wouldn't have told you that this was in America, you would automatically assume this was an African. But this head right here, and the artist, whoever constructed this, Made sure he made it nappy head. Now, this during the time of the Mayans. Again, you got to keep your chronology right. 
because they doing economic trade. I just showed you the barges they was riding on. You see what I'm saying? Now, again, you can easily see it's an African. Period. You can easily see that this is a West African. And I'm going to show you more. Boom. So this right here. <clears throat> so I go right here first. This right here in September the 3rd, 32 BC. Uh, originally written in the uh, long count in 7, 6, 16, 6, 16, 18. Now, this right here is a stella that was found in Tres Aportes in Mexico, which shows uh, the date of which the Omec arrived to this country. You see what I'm saying? The date that the Omec arrived to this country. Now, Starling told them that the Omecs was much more older than the Indians. They didn't believe him. So they go once... They found this stella right here, okay? They only had found the bottom piece first. But the top piece, the date matched what Sterling was already trying to tell them. You see what I'm saying? So this is proof right here that the Omex existed before any Asiatic Indians or any of that. And I'm going to show you where this is an African language, okay? The Mayan language is an African language. Matter of fact, the Mayans are African and Asian. Period. No different than it was during the uh, what you would call slave or uh, uh, colonial times or whatever. Okay? So you see this stella right here. Which got the date 32 BC, which is during the time of Taharka reign. Now, I did a video originally on Facebook. I think I put it up here. Uh, Taarka's Voyages to the West. Uh, you see right here. Now, this is in Mexico. Uh, the Indians drew or uh, 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 made a bus of a, 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 a Egyptian ship. You see what I'm saying? Of an Egyptian ship. So, we are the uh, rulers of the land and the original navigators. You see what I'm saying? We are the original navigators. Now, the Indians, okay, but we was only exploring when we came here, and they wasn't here. The reason the use of the Omex statues is to let people know that they done already been here, okay? Now, how could you not see an African, uh, this is an African in this face, one of the uh, San Lorenzo Omex heads. He, uh, he, he, he Africa, he, this is an African in Mexico, in ancient Mexico, right here. And so you see this Ivan come out of Ivan Van Serlum's work. They came before Columbus. Now, this man is a Dinka man. Now you see he got the slanted eyes, just like the scholar was just talking, thumb up this video, just talking about. Alright? Now, I gotta I gotta do this fast track because I don't know how much time I got on this. Uh, live right here tonight or whatever. How can you not see the African in this face? Now, this is what Ivan Van Serman was talking about. Indians don't wear no braids. These are Ethiopian braids. You see what I'm saying? If you look at Ethiopia right now, they are the women and the men are very particular about how they braid their hair. Period. 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 And so now I'm gonna tell y'all before uh Renoko Rashidi passed, this was one he was going into Ivan Van Sertimus work even deeper. He you know he done traveled to over 125 countries in his lifetime. Rest in peace, Renoko Rashidi. But he was doing a lot of work right here in America to show. Now these is actually the uh last three photos I done showed. Or uh, uh, Renoko Rashidi. And these are the African orders of Ome. Okay? So you see why right here, this right here found in, in America. That, shout out to Renoko Rashidi. You see what I'm saying? I say, see you in the caustic records or whatever. I still got you right here. I'm going to teach you everything that you talk because they acting like they don't know. But you see, you see the African in these faces. All of this is in America, family. 
Knack me easy. You try and tell me that ain't no African. <laughs> Wake up, fam. You know, I, I love you, my brother. I'm not putting you in the category with these goofies. You see what I'm saying? I know you still got your African. It ain't gone. You see what I'm saying? These goofies trying to act like they don't know. Now, this right here, let me keep it moving. This stone is a world map was found in 1984 by gold diggers in Ecuador in the underground tunnel system, 350 artifacts, which do not really fit on any existing South American pre-Columbian culture. Okay? This is before them. Okay? Is the front side is the world stone map and it can see a uh can see approximately uh to the near east of Saudi Arabia. So I'm showing you this is a map. Look, bro. This is a map where you can see Africa. Hold on. Where you can see Africa right there to Africa, North America, Brazil, all of that shit. You can see it right there. It even got a continent in the middle of the Atlantic. And we'll deal with that at, a, at a, uh, another time. Lumeria and Mu and Atlantis. We'll deal with that another time. But you see what it is. You can see it's easily to be seen that that's Africa and America. So that don't fit none of, no, it's pre-Columbian. You see what I'm saying? Now this is a, uh, a rock found, and I'll show you the article in a minute, found in America with the scarab beetle on. You see what I'm saying? Now I'm giving you the artifacts. Now see, now look, now this the man that found it, it says, the cartouche uh, and submitted in the artifact in the curator of uh, Frank Alfred Nord of University of California, Berkeley, examined when the identification was confirmed that it was possible that the artifact of one of these Egyptian exports to Iberia during uh, 615 B.C., when, according to the a Portuguese uh, attorney, Professor D'Antonio, sued by Egyptian vessels visited. And I'm going to show you all them vessels in a minute. But this right here already really been authenticated, you know, by the University of California. But they was trying to say that some Africans came over here later and was trading with other Indians, and this was one of the articles, but they still proved that the Egyptians came to America. Egyptian scarab found in America. Now, why was that shit found? Let me see if I can blow this shit up or not. Anyway, you see it. Now, let me let this play right here. So much the video. Sailed here from the African continent. Inhabitants sailed here from the African continent. Mm -hmm. Now, you see that video, short video right there, just told you they sailed here from the African continent. This is becoming, this is not no theory. This is artifacts. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Don't just sit up here and filibuster. You see what I'm saying? Don't just sit up here. You know, and regurgitate and run off at the mouth when you know. Now you know what it is. All right, now this is round one. I showed y'all this uh, in one of the other. I can't think of which. Matter of fact, it was uh, black Indians, red, red, red mouth, black slaves, red masters. Go thumb up that video <laughs> and go look up this information. Now, these are, this is the story. Uh, Abu Kari. You see what I'm saying? Amasa Musa, who, which I go ahead and tell the story, he had a map of a globe. It was all gold. And it, and it was a globe. No different than in the, in the classroom. Which you could, I did a video on that. Go scroll down. Uh, it's called uh, Coming to America. Go click, go scroll down and go watch them videos. But anyway, and he holding the gold ball. He holding the gold map. I mean, you done seen that? Y'all seen that picture of Massa Musa 
When he holding that gold ball like that, that's a glow. And it's a map on it. No different than that rock what I showed you. He take 2,000 ships. He say he want to go exploring. Brother Abu Kari, which I showed y'all that. He want to go exploring. And he take 2,000 ships. And they said he had enough food. He took seeds. He took animals. He took gold. He took uh, ornamentation. He took all these different type of things. You know, to go find his brothers that came to the continent in the west 5,000 years ago. So you're talking about uh, 1,300, this in our time, the 1,300s. He talk about some Africans that came over here 5,000 years ago. Now, I just showed you the Nubians on the ship. You see what I'm saying? I just showed you the Nubians on the ship. Now, uh, this is a Malian record. This is uh, actual uh document written in Malian record over there in Timbuktu. Look that up. Go look up that. Uh Dabukari. It's an actual fact. And one ship made it back to Mali, and this is how we got this story. You see what I'm saying? Thumb up this video. Again. The OMAC culture is pre-Christ. It ain't just pre-Columbian. It's pre-Christ. You see what I'm saying? Uh, 2000 BC to 250 AD. Okay? This is the, the, the time of the OMAC. You see what I'm saying? Now look right here. I want to give y'all this. It says... Now, I think Taharka is 66 B.C. Now, look, Taharka, the Nubian pharaoh, invades Spain. And, 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 uh, the Nubians invade Spain, also known as Ethiopians. Taharka, the pharaoh, occupies Spain. Greek, Greece, Persian, Egyptians, and Phoenicians, Nubians, and Mediterranean trade. He controlling the whole trade of the Mediterranean. Journey of the Nubians and West Africans to Mexico. Under Taharka, possibly under Taharka, the Omex was established another calendar in 774 BC. See, I'm getting them away. Celebrated on April. Celebrated in April. Settlements away from the Black Omex areas. So, the Black Omex ruled in Mexico about 400 AD. Uh, in 331, 13 to 400 AD. So you talk about the Egyptian dynasty is 31 BC. That's the first dynasty. Now the pre-dynasties go back before that. But what I'm saying is the time of the Omec match with the first dynasties of E, the first dynasty of Egypt. And then you see, you can almost match them. Because I can make, I can trace the 18th dynasty here. Dr. Clark told y'all that too. We can trace the 18th dynasty here, the 25th dynasty here, the first dynasty and the third dynasty. And it might be the 11th. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like seven different dynasties that we can trace in the Americas. And this one right here is Ta'aka. You see what I'm saying? Because Ta'aka, I think it's 600. Now look. This one right here is uh, Jose Sorrento. On my ride to the Hacienda, his house, I asked to take a look at the statue. We went, when I when I saw it, I was struck with surprise. It was a work of art with uh, extraordinary, uh, extraordinary, magnificent sculpture, but it astonished me that it was Ethiopian type represented. I reflected that there was undoubtedly Negroes in this country and they had been the first, it had been the first encroachment of the world. They were the first explorers of the world, okay? This is what the Mexicans uh, were saying about the old man. Now, if you look right here, uh, it's talk about Mexico is saying, uh, Colasio Colono de Tiopio, Ethiopio. It's saying the Ethiopians is the ones that came to this country first. This is what they're saying. Came to the 
Then you look right here, it says, you could tie Egypt over to America. These is the papers, because that was a newspaper. This, both of these are newspapers. And it's showing you that the, the Mexican papers and the South American papers, when they was finding these uh, pyramids and statues and monuments, they immediately said it was African. Thumb up this video. Let me keep rolling. About to go to mock speed. Now you see why here. The old Mac Nubian dynasties continued their rule. The blacks are at a level of old Mac society that spread throughout the rest of Central America. The Mayans, the Mayans, and the black old Macs continued to build in Central America. Each group controlled the trade of commerce and contact. The black old Mac in uh, San Lorenzo, excuse me, in San Lorenzo, a new wave of black. Blacks arrived from West from West Africa worshiping the thunder god of the region. Shango. Okay, Shango. So then you look right here. It says uh they develop artifacts developed and uh the first Mongoloid Indians to move into the Caribbean. The uh Tainos and the Caribs and that shit right there. They taught them. This right, hold on, before I even start it. They taught them, the Africans taught them language, culture, religion, hit, you know, history. You see what I'm saying? And the uh, Indian scholar told y'all, these are priests that came to this country. You see what I'm saying? Because they wasn't on no colonial shit where they going to try to take over and try to make the uh, Indians and the, make them worship what they worship. No. They were, yo, y'all got the jaguar over here. You know, we got the uh, uh, leopard over there. You see what I'm saying? So they wore jaguar skin, the Mayan, the African wore leopard skin, which I'm going to show. Now, this right here is uh, Von Wutano, and he going to tell you what, what it is. Y'all thumb up this video. As far as the institutes are alive, this is a figure named Yahweh Yahweh and this is an all mixed culture and to be black they covered it with tar you see it's a strong head but it's covered with this tar so not only the features and the thick lips come out but it, but it is made black it was uh, put on the cover of uh, um, the uh, vista of, uh, in Mexico on March and uh, shows you that another colossal orbic head was found in Mexico. It is 100% negroid uh, features. What we are certain of, what we are absolutely certain of, is that all mixed civilization which is the mother of all American civilizations, is not a single stranded civilization. It does not belong to one race. It does not belong to what we conceive of as the Native American who came across the Bering Straits. They're obvious. We were other influences, and among those influences was the African, specifically the Egypto Nubian of the Middle Huh? When he say specifically Egypto Nubians, and you saw Earl on. Thumb up this video. You heard Von Wootenow say they made it black on purpose. That it was undoubtedly Negroid. Okay? African. Period. All right, we went over that right there. Now, this is why. But you see, this is the uh, religion of the mind, which is why. We know the worship of the sun. Okay? Now, they got the linguistics. They got the religion. They got a uh, uh, culture. They got the food. All came from Africa. Period. Period. Now this is what I was talking about. Now you see Asian, a, a different, a white. You see what I'm saying? A different skin color. But you see the African handing him a gold spear. Now the thing about this right here is uh, Columbus. In his brother's diary, Columbus say that the African was traded in gold-tipped spears. 
throwing spears. You see what I'm saying? You see the African with the leopard skin on trading with this Mayan priest right here. You see it. And you see the Indian don't got no beard. You see the, Af the African got a beard. Down his neck, just like the Egyptians, okay? You can get a lot when you look at these pictures, okay? You see the white skin around his neck. You see the wood in his ears. He got a beard, okay? He walk, He got a gold tip metal spear. The same thing Columbus then was talking about. You see what I'm saying now? Let me keep it rolling. Now, look. Now, this is another Mayan uh, glyph depicting the African. You see what I'm saying? Depicting the African. Now, some of these copper goofies out here be talking about the pyramid of the sun is bigger than Khufu. Ali, Muhammad, and all these goof troop goofies. It's just not. Because you see Khufu is, oh, what? 480 foot high. 481 foot high. And you see the pyramid of sun is only 216. So it's only half the size of Khufu. So stop with the goofy line. You see what I'm saying? Now you see right here the Africans throwing up Wakanda forever. But then you see right here the Omex throwing it up too. We can look at the culture, the symbolism, everything, the hair nappy, everything, and show the, the, the phenotype and show that they African. The tribes are named the same. The language is the same. The religion is the same. Everything. So we know they African. Hold up. We went through that. So we got to keep going. Now, because I can't go through everything. All right. Now, if you look right here, you see in Mexico, there's evidence of African prehistoric skeletons okay this ain't no guesswork or none of that shit the omex were of african origin okay okay kill them kill them and this right here is the haplo groups and shit and they doing uh uh mitochondrial and they doing uh biology botany they doing all of this shit. They doing a study of the uh the bones. They doing everything already. And it's done been proven that the Omex were of African origin. Okay. Period. You see it right there. Don't act like you blind. Don't act like you blind. Don't act like you blind. Okay. We went through that. We went through that. Boom. Giovanni Vasquez. In service of King. France, the first of France, stated in 1520 that the entire they go that they go entirely naked. He talk about the uh the black the people he saw in Mexico. I mean in, in the Americas. He said they go entirely naked except about the loins. They wear uh animal skins, animal small animal skins like martyrs fastened to the as a granola, uh painted uh grass skirts to which they all round about the body and tails of all other animals hang down with the hold on hold down with hang down to their knees the complex people the comp the comp <laughs> the complexion of these people were black the complexion of these people were black not much different than of the Ethiopians. Now, these are somebody, this is a a, a, a French uh, explorer that's seen them for themselves. Thumb up this video. Got another video right here. It's okay because I don't really know that's what people usually call you. Yes. One of the more controversial positions that you take is that black Africans landed in America. 2,000 years before Columbus. Uh, I would uh, not specify the the day, but probably exceeding 2,000 years. The fact is that Columbus never came to the United States of America or North and South America. He came as close as San Salvador. 
there's a rumor that says that Columbus came to United to, to America. He did not come to America. He came to an island of America. Vespucci came to America, not Columbus. He came to the Caribbeans, but it is commonly stated just as much as they state that Columbus discovered America while the Indians sat down watching do it. Now, but uh, all the, the, the knowledge of Africans and the Americas uh, quite knowledgeable to scholars. The fact that it's suppressed doesn't have uh, any validity at all. Let me bounce a couple of things off of you. One thing, this article that I'm going to be referring to, to our home audience and to our studio audience, this article came out in the September 19, issue, 81 issue of Science Digest. And it's entitled Black Kings in Ancient America. You and some other black scholars believe that these people, African people, came to this continent before Columbus. We don't believe, no. How do we know? But the, the evidence is there. For example, when you go to uh, Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, and uh, at Ecuador and places like that, they have patches of uh, Carthaginian money from 200 feet down in the ground, meaning that there were pluvial disruptions and those money was buried, so it, means it indicate a period of time at least. From that, when you look at the strata, you could tell the period of time in which they've been here. And when you're talking about Carthage, you're talking about at least 212 BC when Carthage was finally destroyed by the by the, by the Romans. Uh, again, the Queen uh, Queen Makeda, uh, which you call the Queen of Sheba, there are maps which Rome, the church in Rome, the so-called Holy Father, has suppressed these maps from the time of Justinian, showing South America and what is today called Central America. The, the maps there and, and Victoria, I mean, I'm sorry, Makeda goes back to at least 892 BC. Before Christ. Before, let's let me point out another thing, just from the same article. I don't know if we can see this on television. So tell me what this is and why do you see this as proof of the presence of Africans in America before? That is the head of an Olmec, uh, uh, Olmec. and the Olmecs were said to be the first. Now, I'm not going to play that whole video. Y'all can uh, Google Dr. Ben Omek and go watch that whole video. Now, again, I, you know, I always like to reference some books. Thumb up this video, The Wonderful Ethiopian Ancient Empire, Kushai Empire, written by Trisilla Dungey Houston, which is a great book, and it showed the Ethiopian Kushai Empire moving all across the globe, even to the Americas. Now, we're going to, yo, this is Lex Shalom, so I'm not going to be able to get in everything. But this right here is uh, talking about the little twice. says, expanding his role as the protector of the children, the God best, as champion is the, uh, under his protection. He, is, uh, he has a fierce face and complete and even though elongated tongue. Now, if you look at the Mayan calendar, uh, best is in the middle of the Mayan calendar with the elongated tongue. The uh, Egyptians subsequently uh, fought the Romans, and they shaped mugs in the God best is for the battle. And you can find these throughout Central and South America, okay? Centuries before Columbus, okay? Now, again, the magical twat. Here they go right here. Dangy, dang. You see what I'm saying? The wolf, small person, the pygmy. You see what I'm saying? That's what it is. Now. Again, this the uh 25th dynasty right here. All right. And these again, we could trace them coming to the Americas. Period. Ain't no you heard Dr. Ben, it ain't no we know. This a fact. This ain't nothing we guessing. You see what I'm saying? Now again, here go a Mayan. African. You see what I'm saying? Just like an African. You see? Just like an African. Boom. In many functions of living in Indian culture, dwarfs are considered uh, miraculous beings of the earth and the mountains, capable of 